Next, we will change the range and calibrate this transmitter to 0 to 150 inches of water. From the service manual, we can determine that this model is adjustable from 0 to 25 to 0 to 250 inches of water. 0 to 150 inches is well within the calibration limits. For a thorough calibration, we will need a low range pressure source, a digital voltmeter, a milliammeter, a 24 volt DC power supply, hookup wire, and tools. Connect the 24 volt DC power supply across the transmitter DC terminals. Be sure to observe polarity. Put the milliammeter in series with the power supply leads. It must be suitable for measuring 4 to 20 milliamperes DC. Connect the digital voltmeter across the test jacks on the printed circuit board. It must be suitable for measuring 10 to 50 millivolts. It is quite obvious that the milliammeter and the DVM are serving the same purpose. For greater accuracy, rely on the DVM. Connect the variable pressure source to the high side of the transmitter. Be sure the low pressure side of the transmitter is vented. Apply a pressure equal to the lower range value to which the transmitter is to be calibrated. In our 0 to 150 inch range, it will be 0 inches. Adjust the fine zero until the output on the DVM is 10 millivolts. The milliammeter should read 4 milliamps. If the fine zero cannot be adjusted down to 4 milliamps, place the coarse zero screw in the next lower hole number, for example, from 4 to 3. Some circuit boards have only two coarse zero adjustments. In that case, the move downward may be from location 5 to 2. If the fine zero cannot be adjusted up to 4 milliamperes, the coarse zero screw is moved to the next higher number. After correctly setting the zero at 10 millivolts or 4 milliamperes, Apply a pressure equal to the upper range limit of the calibrated range. In our example, this is 150 inches of water. Adjust the fine span to where the output is 50 millivolts on the DVM. The milliammeter should read 20 milliamperes. If the fine span cannot be adjusted upward to give 20 milliamperes, place the coarse span screw in the next lower span position. Consult table number one in the instruction manual if necessary. If the fine span adjustment will not bring the output down to 20 milliamperes, Place the span screw in the next higher span position. Once the 20 milliamperes is set for the upper range limit, recheck the zero and the span until the calibration is correct. The zero and span screws do make an electrical contact. Always be sure they are tight. The calibration of the process pressure transmitter is so nearly identical to that for the delta P type that we will not discuss it. 
when a range change requires changing the meter body for either model. It is only necessary to remove the four body or head bolts and replace the center section with one having the correct range. Be sure to inspect the O-ring head gaskets and replace them if necessary. The body bolts should be tightened to 65 pounds per foot torque. As with all electronic transmitters, the measuring circuit internal to the meter body should be free from grounds. To verify this, disconnect the meter body from the printed circuit board. Check each circuit to ground by connecting an ohmmeter between the contact screw ring and the meter body. If a conductive path is indicated, the meter body or center section must be replaced. This diagram shows the ohmmeter connected for a resistance check on the meter body. This table, located in the instruction manual, shows how to check the continuity of the sensor circuits. When the differential pressure transmitter is furnished for a closed type liquid level, the meter is connected as shown here, and the bridge circuit is reversed at the factory. For those who are interested, there is a formula for calculating the correct zero and span screw location for various ranges. It is in the service manuals. We do not believe you will use it. In addition, a troubleshooting guide list is provided in the manual. These checks would usually be used in the shop. The field range change and calibration procedure for the strain gauge type transmitter is very similar to that for the force balance and motion balance types. As a reminder, before removing the cover from any piece of electronic or electrical gear, be sure the area is safe for the particular electrical classification. In this segment, the assumption is made that the student has viewed either tray 12 or 15, or both of them, for this module. Now work exercise number three in your workbook.